Hello, my name is Russell Preston Brown. I'm a senior creative director here at Adobe Systems, as well as a Photoshop evangelist. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss my five favorite new features found in Adobe Photoshop CS5. Now, keep in mind, there's an enormous number of great new features found in CS5, and these are just a few of my favorites. Let's get started. Here, with one of my favorites is painting. There is a new painting engine here in Photoshop CS5. If I click here on my paintbrush and select the mixer brush, you're going to see some amazing things happen. Here you can see a preview of my brush here on the screen. And if I pick up my new art brush here from my Wacom tablet, you can see that I actually have a 3D preview as I rotate the barrel of this brush. I can then go in and start to paint but not only just push colors around as I did in the past, but actually blend colors together with really, really great quality. Now in this project, John Derry started with this original photograph, and then using this new paint technology, he ended up with this final result. You can paint directly over a photograph, as in this case, or create your own original art. Okay, moving forward, my next favorite feature has to be Puppet Warp, right here. Now, Puppet Warp is designed to accurately warp images with exact precision. As you can see in this image, I have my puppet against a transparent background, as you see here. I target my puppet, then go up to my Edit menu and down here to Puppet Warp. After selecting this, you see a mesh appear over your image, as you see here. I can turn the mesh on and off up here, and I think I'll do that, just to make this more clear as I'm working. Then I can go in and lay in control points or pins into my mannequin or puppet in this case to lock areas down or make those areas that I can control with accuracy. In this case, check it out, I can put one in his shoulder, then one in his hand, and then I click on the point and I can bend and stretch it around just like this. Not only that, I can delete this point and then select a point and accurately spin around a control point like this. Let's rotate this down. Let's put an additional point right here. And then let's rotate this up like this. Because finally, I want to show you a great feature over here under mode. I'm going to switch this from normal to distort. Now check this out. It looks like he has muscles now because of this new distort mode feature. I can then flex his muscles back and forth just like this. Now, of course, I've demonstrated this new feature on this puppet, but this new technology can be used on a variety of images where you need accurate control. Let's move on. I have to talk about this new feature called HDR Pro. Now, in HDR Pro, you can then merge together multiple images, in this case, 11 different exposures, combining those together to get the results you see here. Here we are inside the Merge to HDR Pro dialog. I can go up here to the top to start this off by selecting a preset. I want to demonstrate that I can go in and add a natural toning to my image, as you see here with one of my presets. Or I can even go in and add a very surreal quality, as in the case with my vibrant toning preset you see here. So you can see that there's a full range of possibilities when working with this new HDR Pro set of controls. One of the great new features that's really unique is the Remove Ghosts feature right here. Now in a project like this, each exposure was taken with a wave in a different position. And as you can see down here in this set of images, I can target the exact image or the exact wave in this case as I click here on one of them to get just the wave I wanted. Yes, that's the one with a little bit of a splash happening on this rock with the sun catching it just like that. That's great. So that's the new Remove Ghost feature, which then isolates a single frame as the master frame within your HDR image. That's an incredible feature. Okay, moving on, let's go to my next great feature. And that has to be the ability to make a really accurate mask and make it really, really easily. In this particular case, I want to mask out this horse. So I'm going to load in a quick mask selection that I made earlier, as you see here. And as you can see, it doesn't exactly select 
all of the horse's mane or of the horse's tail, the fine detail. So I'm going to start with a basic selection. Then I'm going to go over here and select my masking panel right here. Up here, I can then click on this icon to add the mask. And then finally, mask edge right here. That's where the new controls are. Because in these new controls, I can now paint in the areas of transition. What I'm looking at right now is the mask itself, as you see here. But showing you the mask is really going to show you how this works. Closing that down, I'm going to add a little bit of radius, the edge detection here, and I'm going to go in with this brush. This brush will then assign the area of transition. Notice how I just paint over this area where the mane is. Wow! Check that out. Will that work on the tail? Let's give it a try. So I'm defining the areas of transition with a simple brush, and then the fine details seem to just emerge from nowhere. I can go back in and repair this just as easily, just like that. Let's finish that up. That looks great. And now let's export this mask. So down here, I want to add one more detail a great new feature called decontaminate colors. You know the fringe or colors that sometimes contaminate the edge of a selection? Those can be removed quickly and easily. And not only that, I can create this into a new layer with that mask. I now click OK. So we'll then calculate all my adjustments and as you can see here, it's created a new layer that leaves my original layer alone and untouched. Let's finish this presentation off with one final thing. What I want to show you is the ability to combine what we've just done with a mask with a new feature called Content Aware Fill. I'm going to load in a new selection of the horse as you see here. And I'm lassoing the area that I want to fill and make it magically disappear. Check it out. If I target this layer and then I hit my Shift key and my Delete key, it will automatically bring up my fill dialog as you see here. One of my choices for filling it is content aware right there. Check this out. I'm clicking OK and magically it will remove the horse from the background. In fact, the fence has been redrawn, the trees have grown, and I have put in new grass. You just have to see that again. Command Z or Control Z to undo and undo amazing capabilities for content aware fill. Combine that with the fact that we put this horse against a mask, select our horse with the move tool, and then we can just move that horse into a new position within our entire photograph. Great, great capabilities. So you've just seen my five favorite features found here inside of Photoshop CS5. Give them a try.